transfer portal going on right now, as we said earlier this week, it got open and active. And one of the names that jumped in there was five-star cornerback, former five-star cornerback, and uh, Houston, Texas native Denver Harris was in that mix. And Harris uh, went off to Texas A&M and had a, uh, a pretty rocky freshman season on the field when he was available, he was a star. Uh, at the midway point, he was uh, ranked as high as any freshman in the country. Uh, and for uh, a lot of services who were doing like midway uh, All-American teams, Denver Harris was on all of the freshman All-American squads at the midway point. After that, got into some trouble off of the field. Uh, some stuff that, look, man, some boneheaded stuff like um, the, the, the car in the garage is is – just senseless, and luckily nobody was hurt in that in that stunt. But you know, going through a parking garage of you know upwards of you know 75, 80 miles an hour is that, that's a recipe for disaster. And I think that you know, luckily nobody got hurt on that, and there was a great teaching lesson that came out of it. In fact, I, I can speak for certain uh, and know on a hundred percent fact that the car was actually taken away from Harris after that. He still does not have. A vehicle. Now, that meant he was he was catching rides with 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 other people, and he jumped in the car with with another Texas A and M player who had guns and drugs in the car when they got pulled over. Again, not a good look for Denver Harris. They're on the road at South Carolina, and some kids are uh, claimed to be hitting a vape pen in the locker room, and Harris was was in that mix. I can tell you that his parents now. Um, have been told and have been clarified that he was not in that in that number. There was some speculation whether he was or he wasn't, but uh, the administration at, at Texas A and M the, and the football department have told um, Denver's hair, you know family that that he was not penalized or punished for that that action. So uh, I know that there is a a report and there are stories around that that he was he was in that mix and. Um, whether he was or he wasn't in that um, that night, I don't know. But I do know that the the, the administration and that the football department at Texas A and M has told the family that um, they they did not charge him with anything or do not see him as a guilty party um, in that. Did he do some things that uh, you'd like to have back as 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 a freshman in college? Did he do some things that 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 he's not proud of? Sure. Um, and, and, and I'm not, you know, going to use the example of who hasn't and, you know, who it's a different day and time where these, um, you know, the, the, the kids want to put things on Instagram. They want to live their life kind of through video, through, um, you know, live messaging through live, live video. And, you know, for all of this stuff to kind of be on display for it to all be seen and people being reacting to it. Um, you know, I think. For, for a large part, has, has humbled him to a degree. Um, and a, a, another thing I can, I can say for certain is that he has always wanted to come to LSU. And that LSU has always been his dream school. And that if there was ever an opportunity to make up the decision that he made last year, he would love to be in Baton Rouge. And I think so much so where he would absolutely buy in and fall in line to what Brian Kelly is building. By no means do I, I believe that by taking Denver Harris, if LSU does, do they have some type of malcontent on their hand? Do they have a guy that is young and look, if you're listening to this and are old enough to remember Tack Miner playing basketball at LSU, Tack Miner came with with some with some stuff, man. You know what I mean? He came his his attitude, his personality, his his mindset out there. You know, look, it it, it wasn't for everybody, and that's why Tack could average you know thirty points, thirty three points his senior year, and not every college in the country was on him. Right, I mean, he he was he was somebody that you knew you were going to have to you were going to have to discipline. You were going to have to 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 be prepared for for his personality. And 
Denver is tax, you know, legal stepson, but has been in his life since Denver has been an infant. You know, I mean, and he's tax son. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, from a personality standpoint, he, he's he's not as as brash as as Tack was, but I mean, look, man, he's a five star cornerback that comes with the personality of a five star cornerback that LSU has seen many a times in their locker room, many a times throughout the recruiting. And one other thing I'll let you know about Denver Harris is that he's a day one starter for LSU, and not because they're in a position of need. Not because that that has a vacancy there, because he's potentially the best player at that position in that class. And he wants to be here. He wants to be at LSU. And I think that there's some meetings. I don't think. I know that there's some, some meetings that need to take place between the family and between the player and between the coaches. That's going to happen. They're going to have those discussions and have those meetings, and I think the staff will determine whether or not they want to include him in in the class. One thing's for certain that everybody knows. Guy's a stud. Kid can play. Soon as he touches down on your campus, he's starting for you. Is he eighteen year is he eighteen years old and needs discipline? Yeah, he does. Didn't we all? Doesn't Lloyd at 31? I mean, <laughs> don't, bitch. Don't, we, <laughs> don't we still? You know, I mean, all of yeah, us. But do. I mean, at 18, it's a different type of attention to that part of your life that you need. And he needs it. But I think a lot of what he did and maybe the way he acted is because if you're not all the way in on where you are, it's mm-hmm. easy to fall out of line, right? Like, I don't think yeah. he was all the way bought in on being at a and He wasn't all the way bought in on the message that Jimbo was sending. And when you have, if you want to be somewhere else, you can kind of almost subconsciously force your way there or like without even really knowing what you're doing. But you don't really give up. You don't give a hell. Like, give a fuck what you're doing well, because I you mean, don't want to be there. If you don't have discipline and you live in a world where if you don't have it, you'll, you'll bend it. That's exactly. not the best place for everybody. Right. And Harris was allowed, and look, I'm not making the excuse for him because there's a lot of guys that went onto that campus that just bought it, that, that, that abided. Fell in line. They just abided, right? And it seemed like Harris was, was in trouble throughout his freshman season. But in talking to people in and around that program and people that were following that program, there wasn't a lot of discipline and structure put in place to hold these guys accountable. One of the first things that Brian Kelly did that jumped out to everybody was build accountability Mm -hmm. to, to hold people accountable for their actions. It looks as if, you know, Texas A&M feels a lot like LSU was a couple of years ago where, I mean, it was the players were running the place. I mean, you know, I mean, they were getting away and doing with really whatever they wanted to do. So, that's what um, it feels like. It feels like, like that's the, that's why LSU almost makes sense for Denver Harris because even if you are a parent and you see how he's acting, it's like, well, now I don't want you even close to A&M. Mm-hmm. Like, you obviously yeah. can't handle yourself there. Like, especially when you add that many stars at once, like A&M did, there's going to be – they're all – like, it, it's almost like a little fish in a big pond. Mm-hmm. They're, they're used to being superstars and being coddled and, like, having people help them through their life at yeah. points whenever they need things, whenever you have 15 of them on campus, like not everybody can get the same amount of attention. But if you come to a place where, hey, not everybody's a five-star here, then you can kind of get a little bit more accountability. You can get the help that you need to where it's not on a whim, I'm going to make a decision to do something whenever I should have been talking to somebody first. And I will tell you that the the biggest testimonial, the biggest advocate, and the biggest advantage – that Denver Harris has going for him as far as LSU goes is that you know who his best friend is? You know who he grew up with? You know who he's been on the youth league team with since they were eight years old with? Who? Harry. Harold Perkins. Oh, I was like, Harry. So if Harold walks up into the into, the, into the, the, the room and says, it's my guy. I vouch for him. You bring him in, I'm keeping him in line. 
He's going to be running with, with 40. And guess what 40 ain't doing? He ain't been in the rules. He's not, he's not subjecting years himself <laughs> to penalizing his football status. I, I believe that. Me too. I, I believe that Harold Perkins is, he's just, he's focused on football. He's focused on Sundays. He's focused on getting there. This is a part of the process. And Denver Harris being one of his good friends and being in his inner circle day one is good for everybody. It's good for Denver. It's good for LSU. It's good for Brian Kelly. It's good for Denver's family. It's good for the LSU defense. It's good for everyone. And if that happens, if he's accepted into the class, which I think there's a face-to-face meeting that's going to happen, that the decision will be made upon, if all of that lines up, then LSU just picked up the number one cornerback in the same class where they got Harold Perkins, who's the number one linebacker. And you got those cats playing on the field together again. And not only that, you're doing a solid for Perkins. Now he feels more comfortable. My guy's here. I mean, make it happen, man. And don't you think that Harold now, after the year he had, has that cachet to be able to walk Hell in and be yes. like, I'm yes. not telling you what to do, but I'm saying, like, I'm in this room because Hell I'm vouching for Denver yes. Harris, so you know how I feel about him. Yes. And if you want to keep 40 happy, this is a great way to do it. Go a long way for me. Absolutely. And look, that's all we need to hear. Thank you, Harold. Thank you, Harold. All right. <laughs> we appreciate it. You want to rod with? We'll let you know. <laughs>